Well, if you want evidence of why you, the taxpayer, should not be funding activist groups like the Human Rights Commission, you only need to look at their latest publication, 102 pages of pure bunkum that wasted a tree in printing. But it's going to be cold tonight, so it's the perfect fire starter. So the uh, Conversion Practices Insights Report has been released by the Human Rights Commission. Uh, that's the Human Rights for People We Like Commission. Now, the intro of this report says, the purpose of this report is to capture the extensive collective learning and reflection that we gathered from our role in implementing the new conversion therapy law, as well as recommending actions to take to support survivors of conversion practices and to pre prevent these practices from occurring. This report concludes with nuanced advice uh, informed by lived experience about the support survivors need to promote healing. Now, Remember, according to the Human Rights Commission themselves, the $2.2 million taxpayer-funded complaint centre set up by the Human Rights Commission for receiving complaints about conversion therapy has struggled to obtain any formal complaints in the two years since the new law was passed, despite significant advertising about its services. No complaints referred to the police, and the New Zealand police also said they've received no direct complaints which have warranted an investigation. Now, this is consistent with numbers uh, before the law was passed. So the taxpayer, you, via the Human Rights Commission, has spent $2.2 million looking for a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. But what the politicians and these activist groups have done is make it difficult for parents, counsellors and therapists to support troubled adolescents who identify as trans or gender diverse. So let's have a look at this little fire starter. Uh, and the forward immediately unpacks Critical Theory 101 in all its glory. And it says, uh, Rainbow people experience discrimination at a rate higher than the general population. For Māori, Pacific and ethnic peoples in Aotearoa, this is overlaid with racism. Colonisation impacted Indigenous people's traditional acceptance of the natural fluidity of sexuality and gender, replacing it with a rigid binary opposition of male and female. Disabled rainbow people who experience conversion practices also face layered oppression, arising from a pervasive perception that they need to be cured or corrected for their sexuality or gender identity and their impairments. Whew. The intersectionality in this is overwhelming, uh, and this is coming from a cis, white, heterosexual Christian, married male with XY chromosomes, the source of all evil. Um, it then says in the report, the evidence shows that conversion practices do not work. Do not work. And it's classic that there is no link to any research on that statement, because there isn't any. The evidence was probably gained in the tea room at the Human Rights for Some Commission at their regular Monday morning staff meeting. A show of hands. And then to really destroy their already destroyed credibility, the Human Rights Commission, quote, the Disinformation Project. The Disinformation Project's report found the language and imagery used online against transgender people had become more violent over time. The language and imagery they found included repeated denials that transgender people exist or that they should be allowed to exist. The report described the language used about transgender people as genocidal. Well, that's concerning. Uh, I thought I would see if I could find some examples of that. And um, yep, uh, oh, there's one. That's the pro-trans against Posey Parker. Um, yeah, there's another one. Uh, and here's, oh, there's another one. Yeah, so some interesting examples there of violence against Nazis or TERFs or people who believe in biology. Uh, anyway, on to the executive summary. I bet you're really enjoying this report. And they say, ending conversion practices contributes to upholding Te Tiriti o Waitangi. 
The territory also protects the right to be free from discrimination for Māori, including discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. Oh, I must have, must have missed that bit in the treaty. Uh, and then it says the international and domestic human rights relevant to conversion practices include the right to freedom from discrimination, the right not to be deprived of life, and the right to freedom of expression. The right not to be deprived of life. I never knew that the Human Rights Commission was against abortion. I mean, that's awesome. And the right to freedom of expression. Oh, except if you want to live your life according to your religion or personal beliefs. Now, by the way, I did a word search of this 102 page doc document that you paid for just to see who the real enemy was when they're talking about this issue. Uh, and here's the words. Church was mentioned 49 times, Christian 46, marriage 31, mosque none, Muslim one, and Hindu, Buddhist, Mormon, other religions about two to three times. So you know who public enemy number one is, according to the Human Rights for Some Commission. Now the publication does have some recommendations and one of them is to make it easier to prosecute people by removing the requirement that the Attorney General has to approve any prosecutions. Uh, this clause was always a sop to those sitting on the fence, politicians, uh, that we want the law but it's not going to be enforced much, we just want to send a message. You know, a bit like the police discretion for smacking offences. Politicians always get sucked in by those little promises and then they vote for dumb laws. But it, the report has recommendations for the church, saying, engage in research around inclusive and affirming interpretations of religious spiritual teachings. Commence a review process of reckoning with religious texts and teachings that do not affirm rainbow people. Inclusive interpretations with an open mind. In other words, the Bible according to the Human Rights for Some Commission, with just the nice bits. Uh, fortunately, the Christian Church knows that the Bible changes us. We don't change it. The Commission uh, then sinned and lied. Uh, and it said uh, in February 2021, Dr. Elizabeth Carey Carey, a Green Party MP at the time, who's no longer a Green Party MP because of bullying allegations, presented a further petition to Parliament to accelerate the pro process, progress for a ban. Her petition collected 150,000 plus signatures in one week, the largest validated petition in the history of Aotearoa. Nope. Lie. It was a Green Party petition hosted on their website, signed by anyone in the world, with no verification. And activists around the world did sign it. A complete porky told by the Commission. Uh, but here's the interesting bit. They then have a little footnote with the list of the seven MPs who dared to oppose the law, the conversion therapy law. Now why did the Human Rights for Some Commission list those names and not the ones who voted for it? Why do you think? To me it's skullduggery at its worst. The Human Rights for Some Commission wants to name and shame politicians they hate. And my message to these MPs who are still in Parliament is shut down this radical activist commission. They hate democracy. Now, <laughs> this report took 18 months to write. Think of all the taxpayers' wages paid by you for this report. I mean, they had 2.2 million to spend, so they had to justify their existence somehow. But here's why the report is useful only for starting fires. They say this, this is quite shocking. We received a small amount of feedback from those supportive of conversion practices as a way to uphold what they perceive to be the rights of families and religious communities to discipline or try to change those in their care, or maybe live their lives according to our belief. We have not given space to those views in this report. 
Shocking. But in an earlier Official Information Act request uh, that I did, they admitted the Commission has not knowingly had any engagement with individuals who made submissions against the new law and who had positive experiences of receiving counselling to deal with unwanted sexuality and gender confusion issues. You see, the human rights for some Commission don't want to hear any contraview. They don't want the feedback. They don't listen to feedback. They only want human rights for those they agree with. Okay, I can't stomach too much more of this, but uh, look, just a few more bits. On page 22, it lists examples of conversion therapy. Now, we would oppose most of the things in this list, as anybody would. Always have, always will. Beatings, whippings, burnings, corrective rape, electric shocks. I mean, they are literally shocking. But there's a few interesting items there. Prayer. Recitation of religious texts with some type of aversion component. Oh, that the text, that the, the uh, scripture might change us. Uh, that naughty word, sin word. I mean, maybe that's a problem. And you'll note there, worship. Uh, in fact, at a youth worker conference last year in Auckland, the commission told youth workers that an altar call could be conversion therapy. Now, the Commission is quite adamant that conversion therapy is happening in New Zealand, even though they haven't received any formal complaint. And to prove that, they showed this graph. One third said yes, they'd received conversion therapy, and 27% weren't quite sure. The problem was that the source of these comments were a conference with a significant attendance of 26, uh, yeah, 26, including allies, so not all LGBTQIA people. Uh, <laughs> on page 29, they again repeat their pro-life lie, uh, or they, you know, they say they have a pro-life stance, but they're actually lying about it because they quote the rights, rights of the child in Article 6, which says the child's inherent right to life and state parties' obligation to ensure to the maximum extent possible the survival and development of the child, embracing the child's physical, mental, spiritual, moral, psychological, and social development. They really are confused, aren't they? I mean, they don't actually care for the rights of the unborn child. We know that. So they just sort of throw that, that statement in, but they don't actually believe it. Now, on page 31, they say this, trans people, all healthcare professionals, sorry, under the title of trans care, all healthcare professionals have a duty to provide gender-affirming care within their scope of practice. Now, that is false. They don't have a duty to chemicalise, castrate, and confuse young people. Another lie from the Commission. They obviously haven't read the CAS report or the many other bits of research that are coming out. Uh, and then there's some more critical theory and attacks on religion, specifically, of course, Christianity. Uh, have a listen to this doozy. The introduction of Christianity in Aotearoa by European missionaries in the 19th century brought with it concepts of binary gender, monogamy, and heteronormativity, which influenced and altered attitudes towards sexual orientation and gender that largely remain today. Catholic leaders recommend celibacy as a path for those with diverse sexualities. This is still, however, a form of suppression. Uh, <laughs> note to the Commission, this uh, gift of celibacy also applies to heterosexuals also. Uh, and then there's this classic comment about the LGBT community being racist. Yep, you heard that right. A 2023 study of the experience of Asian rainbow youth captures the way young people experienced rainbow community spaces as white and not spaces in which the Chinese rainbow youth quoted could be themselves. The rainbow space is still predominantly cis and white dominated for me to feel entirely comfortable because currently it doesn't feel like it's a space I go to feel represented and loved. Mm. Uh, and as part of this discussion, 
they mention that other examples of conversion practices in ethnic communities include, get this, black market hormones and herbal remedies to demasculinize or defeminize an individual. Oh, so hormones which make people more feminine or more masculine are a form of conversion therapy. Can you see just how deluded and confused the commission are? I'm starting to wonder whether they wrote this report after having a few, oh, you know what I mean. But look, just finally, they do have advice for churches. Listen up. Uh, under prayer, they say review the prayers and liturgy offered in your space. If you think they may cross the line into conversion practices, consider reaching out to the commission. Yep, the Church of the Human Rights for Some Commission will write your prayers and liturgy for you. How generous. Uh, get consent before praying for someone. Consent applies to topics of prayer and to physical touch during prayer interactions. Privacy should be taken seriously when it comes to prayer. Diversify prayer. Consider expanding prayer into music, art, written, and other verbal outlets. Oh, where would the church be without wonderful advice from the Human Rights for Some Commission? Under worship, consider the language used in worship and whether it could be unintentionally excluding some community members. Some traditional songs may no longer be appropriate. As with teaching material, consider using new gender neutral terms. Uh, under leadership and groups, review the names of your ministries or groups. Do they have gender titles? If so, do, they, do you need to have them? Consider renaming groups to reflect their activity or purpose. For example, sewing group or prayer breakfast. In other words, don't say men's breakfast, women's fellowship, ladies night, men's group. And don't you even mention promise keepers or sisters conference. Don't you dare. Uh, under community, they say, this is, remember this is to churches. Consider having non-religious events. When your community celebrates events, consider whether you need to include a religious element. Also, consider celebrating events that may uplift your rainbow community like Pride Month. Consider placing a small pride flag or poster with a rainbow affirming message in a common area. Review the layout of your bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, you know where that is going. And finally, under the heading, what about the sacred text. Let me just show you uh, what it says for that. Becoming an accepting and inclusive church does not necessarily mean putting aside traditional religious texts or changing your view on the authority of these texts in the life of your community. Oh, lovely. Thank you. For example, theologians and others who advocate for an inclusive interpretation of scripture often refer to six well-known Bible verses used against homosexuality as clobber verses or passages. Many posit that these few verses have been weaponized to justify discrimination and exclusionary treatment of rainbow people within church life. In response, a rich discourse and scholarship that challenges those traditional interpretations and assumptions now exists. These include interpretations, these inclusive interpretations are available for rainbow communities and others who cherish their sacred texts and acceptance of diverse genders and sexual orientations. Now, one of the resources it recommends is this one, Join the Chariot. It's written by Inside Out, need I say more? It's neither theologically grounded nor carefully crafted, and its foreword uh, quickly indicates that the resource is neither theologically grounded nor a taonga, as it claims. Uh, and what this uh, precious resource provides is an exemplary reading of the gospel text. It says this in the uh, opening. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. For just as Jesus is rebuking the Pharisees for not taking care of those whom they are responsible, for instead acting as those who bring fear and potential harm into the lives of those most vulnerable, Jesus is also insisting it is the human right of all to choose if they so desire to come out and to go find abundant pasture. That's what that Bible verse apparently is about, coming out. This, of course, is a complete and offensive misrepresentation of the words of Jesus in John 
10 9. Now you can go to Family First NZ and search Chariot and you'll see more of our analysis of this idiot resource which you may find both amusing but also offensive and alarming. Look, all New Zealanders should be protected from coercive, abusive or involuntary psychological or spiritual practices. But participation in psychological assessments, counselling, prayer meetings, it's almost always an expression of voluntary behaviour and personal freedom. But under the conversion therapy law, which the human rights for some commission love, under this new law, people are prevented from getting help to live the lifestyle they choose. And parents could be criminalised for encouraging their children to embrace their biological sex. Ironically, while gender and sexuality is supposedly fluid, activists want the law to stipulate that it can only go in the direction they approve. So conversion therapy is still legal in New Zealand. It's practised in schools by groups such as Inside Out and Rainbow Youth. The bottom line though, the Human Rights for Some Commission is just an activist group that should be immediately defunded. The conversion therapy law should be binned. Uh, and for anyone with a copy, where is it? For anyone with a copy of this report, they should use it to start the fire tonight. Apparently, it's going to be a cold night. Mm -hmm.